I recently saw some used battery pack modules for sale on Battery Hookup and decided to buy them. They are 14.4 uh, volt nominal 4S lithium ion batteries, 95 watt hours. And because they came from medical packs, uh, I trust them a little more that they're going to have good BMS components and that they're going to be good uh, name brand Panasonic cells. And the other advantage of these medical packs, besides being pretty trustworthy components, is that they uh, tend to not get cycled a lot because they're used in backup uh, medical equipment. And so they just sit fully charged. And then uh, at some point they have to get rid of the batteries and cycle them out just because they're uh, aged out to a certain age, but the capacity can still be full or almost full. They're just cycling them out um, and, and just being uh, cautious. The 4S configuration is useful if you're doing uh, audio or video uh, or lighting work because um, there's a common format for video camera batteries called V-mount batteries, which are this voltage. These types of batteries are used on cameras and they're also used on lighting equipment. And if you buy one, uh, they can be quite expensive. Um, a similar 95 watt hour capacity, uh, if you buy a V-mount battery, even a cheap one is going to run about $90. And of course you can pay much, much more like this Anton Bauer that's uh, $300. And then this Sony battery that for some reason, maybe because it's so compact is very expensive. And there's some reason that these are much more expensive. They can definitely provide uh, a higher current rating, 10 amps continuous compared to the battery pack that I'm getting here. That is uh, probably something you only want to draw at most six amps from. And really, even then, I, I'd probably keep it more to around three, as is mentioned in the copy. Uh, luckily, the camera equipment that I need to use is only mm, 20 watts draw tops. So that's that's not going to uh, go over two amps of draw. So this should be a, a fine pack to use. Uh, the battery pack comes with four wires. Uh, two are the positive and negative coming out of the BMS. And the other two blue wires are for the uh, temperature sensor, which I'm, I'm not using. And uh, so all I needed to do was to solder the, the positive and negative connectors to a DC jack that I wanted to use. So the next thing to do was to design an enclosure. And I designed a clamshell enclosure that I wanted to mill out of uh, HDPE, which I've used in the past for electronics enclosures. Something I've learned uh, milling this in the past is that I need to use really thick walls because this plastic isn't very strong. It tends to bend a lot. And so, uh, it can make it very difficult to mill thin features. And one interesting note is that you can get really cheap HDPE if you buy cheap cutting boards because they're going to be HDPE and they tend to be pretty thick and fairly large and fairly cheap. So, uh, for this, uh, machining, I, uh, had previously cut down the size of the, uh, of the stock. And then I actually did precisely finish machine the, the front and back uh, edges. Basically the edges contacting the vise are already to the final dimension. Uh, and then the edges sticking out are still saw cut, but you'll see now that I'm milling them to the final uh, dimension and adding a chamfer. One of the nice things about working with HDPE is that it's very easy to cut. And so this is a uh, quarter inch end mill and I'm basically just slotting full width uh, at the full depth. And I could even go deeper uh, if I had was using an end mill that was, uh, had a, a longer flute length. And it's, uh, it barely makes a sound. It's, it's just a joy to cut. It's cutting at 60 inch, inches per minute. And you can see the, uh, the chip streaming off to the sides. It's almost a, a self-lubricating material. Very low friction, so it's very easy to cut. Uh, so this is just milling out the main um, pocket for the battery. There's a main deeper pocket where the battery goes. And then there's also a shallower pocket uh, to make room for the cables and the jack. And this is the milling for that shallower pocket.
And then I'm just doing some spot drilling for the uh, the screws that are going to hold the two clamshell cases together. It's worth noting that with HDPE, I've had really good success um, just uh, drilling to the uh, the tap drill diameter. So in this case, for M3 screws, I'm I'm going to drill out I'm going to drill out to 2.5 millimeters, and then I just uh, leave that untapped. And then when I finally actually screw in the M3 screw. It will cut threads, kind of like a form tap into the plastic. And the reason that I'm just spot drilling here is because uh, my mill uses a, my mill spindle uses a uh, collet, and so I'd have to go find the the right collet and uh, switch collets to put the smaller drill in if I wanted to drill out the um, the holes. Alternatively, if I just spot drill, I can um, take this over to the drill press and and drill it out really quickly. And then the next operation here is just cutting the. Uh, half of the hole on each clamshell for the uh, the DC jack. And there's a little bit of chatter here, and you can hear it squealing, and that's just because it's uh, it's not supported very well in the vise. But it's okay, because the I had a little finish pass here that uh, is actually doing the final dimension. And then flipping it over, on one side of the case where the bolt heads are going to go, I cut uh, essentially some counter bores so that the, they would fit flush with the top. And then finally, I'm adding a pretty significant chamfer to the full perimeter so that it's nice, feels nice in your hand. And I'm actually just leaving the original finish as the HDPE came uh, on the top. And it actually uh, is, makes for a pretty nice uh, surface to hold. It, it's a little bit textured and rough. It, it kind of uh, gives a little bit of grip. So when you're holding it in your hand, uh, it's not just smooth on every side. And then I did uh, essentially the same set of operations the DC jack is mirror mirrored, and then also the, the top finish was uh, a little different than the bottom side. But I just uh, ran most of the programs again for the other half of the clamshell. I realized after doing this that I had um, no way to tighten the nut on the jack um, after I closed the enclosure. So I had to actually just tighten it down as well as I could on half of the clamshell and then try really hard to squeeze the top half on. Putting the top half of the clamshell on basically holds it uh, fairly securely because I didn't leave a lot of tolerance, so this ended up being okay. And that's the final battery. You can see the uh, the DC jack that I used has a little rubber um, cover that you can put on it, which I thought was a good idea. And here's the other side, so you can see the, the bolts from the bottom. And I actually, uh, I got two of these packs because they were only $7. <laughs> uh, and I made uh, one enclosure out of white and one enclosure out of red, just because those are the colors I had around. And if you're curious, this is what it looks like with the V-lock mount attached to it. And that's it.